This video and ones like it are made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want to have a say in what games and topics are covered on this channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash toogie24 and get involved. You can also head over to my Teespring store to buy shirts that you'll never wear in public. Link in the description. Hello everybody and welcome to day one of our brand new tournament here on the channel, the Tournament of Draft Classes. If you didn't check out the kind of prequel to this, so to speak, the introduction, it goes over all the teams, the idea of the tournaments, the jerseys, and all that fun stuff, the setup episode. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. I'll give you another couple of seconds to click off of this video and go check it out before we take a look at the bracket. So, at the end of that episode, you know I had a big decision to make. Did we run the 2021 draft class or did we run the Ottawa 05? So obviously it's a tough call. You know, we had 17 teams for 16 spots. You know, do we run Ottawa with Sidney Crosby and company or do we run the 2021 team as potential underdogs to, you know, they are the most recent class and by math should be in here but they're gonna get pooped on, most likely, right? Like they just haven't had time to develop, even compared to that 2020 team. We ran a quick three game or a best of three series between the 05s and the 2021s and the 05s absolutely smoked them. So again, you know, I think it does kind of make more sense. Maybe one last hurrah for that 05 draft class, but this is the bracket. As you can kind of tell, it goes essentially in reverse order, 05 versus 2020, 06 versus 19 so on and so forth and we are going to get right down to it here because as always these are going to take a little while and we will start off with the 05 and the 20s going head to head let's do this we had a long way to go here in round number one here on day one and we will go through this somewhat quickly as the 05s are trailing Caden Gooley with the goal and they do tie it though, TJ Oshie on Nico Dawes. Over time, and the 05s lose. Jake Sanderson is the hero for the 2020 class as they take game one against the 05s, Nico Dawes, with an incredible performance. You know, maybe we should have done a combination 2020, 2021 class, you know, kind of have it be, you know, the, the hybrid, the, uh, the COVID classes, so to speak, because obviously those weren't held in person but hey for the moment clearly there was a lot we could have done this is what we have and the 2020s have the lead we move on 16 and 09 first game of their series good start there for the 16s with charlie mcavoy the 09 tie it with Braden shen wow what a third period fox kyra matthews and tyson jost one of those things is not like the other he gets the empty netter great performance for the 2016 matthew shane got that lone goal for the 09s in the third period so a very very good start there for the 2016 class now this might be the most interesting one because we included the 05s the two vancouver classes go head to head it is 2019 against 2006 cole caulfield scores for the 19 goal apiece matt boldy and nick backstrom and the 2019 class gets the win trevor zegris seals the deal just one goal for the 06 very, very surprising, very strong performance from Spencer Knight to start that series off. We have the 15s against the 10s. Let's see how this one plays out. 2 nothing for the 10s. Hall and Gallagher on the goals. Still 2 nothing after 2. And the 15s got on the board. It was Miko Ranton, and that is shocking. Connor McDavid in the 15s held to just one goal in game number one. Freddie Anderson take a bow. Very, very strong performance there. We've already seen some surprising results here. 07 and 2018. First game of their series. The 18s have the lead. Evan Bouchard. Two goals for the 07s. Backlund and Pacioretty. And then two goals in the third for the 18s. Zadina and Kachuk. Of course, the 07s are the one you know, with the worst goaltending in this tournament. I think even if the 2021s were in, they absolutely 07 would still have the worst goaltending. And indeed they do. And it costs them that game 3-2 final for the 2018 class a basket of apples for Yegor Sharangovich not bad 2014 and 2011 getting things going here one nothing for the 11s Kucherov 
Make that three, nothing. Two goals for Johnny Goodrow. And a goal apiece there, dry sidle, but an empty netter from Saad seals the deal. So a good start for the 2011s. Again, very intrigued to see after you guys get to see the teams who you think will end up winning it all and whether or not we're going to have that many upsets here. Round one, scoreless first period between the 08s and the 17s and dominant period for the 08, but the 17s strike first. Elias Pedersen on Markstrom and they win it one to nothing. So it is a 32 save shutout for Jake Ottinger. Playoff Ottinger against Markstrom, am I right? <laughs> Tell me, tell me my rosters aren't realistic. Look at that goaltending performance from them too. Get out of here. We have the 12s and the 13s, our final head-to-head -head matchup here, our final first game. Good start for 13, Lindholm and Pesci. Goal apiece, Gensel and Foxa. And 4-1 final, Nathan McKinnon seals the deal. Great start for 2013. UC Saros as well makes 23 saves. So there you go. Every single game won in the books. Let's move on and see if the 05 care to kind of get their series back on track. James Neal gets the opening goal here on Dawes. There it is. Uh, yeah. Yandel, Crosby, Hornquist. Like how much was Nico Dawes going to be able to shut them down? They end up putting 5-1 to one as Kopitar gets a goal in there as well right at the end. So 5-1 final. Great performance for Jonathan Quick and again the veterans, the 05s, who earned their way into this tournament by beating the 2021s. Now I kind of wish I did that combined class, but it is what it is. We move on to game two, 16s and the 09. Let's see here, ooh, five goals combined. Smith, Debrinkit, Brat, Ellis, and Debrinkit again. Second period is goalless, go figure. And in the third, the 16s get the win. Patrick Line's power play tally. Seals the deal for the 2016 class. A great performance there for Alex Debrinkit leading the way there. We have the all Vancouver matchup. 2019 is up one to nothing in this series. 1 1 here at the end of the first. Marchand and Boldy. Now 2 2. Marchand and Caulfield. Now 3 3. Caulfield and Marchand. Brad Marchand has a goal in every single period. Tied up with 36 seconds left. Did he win it in overtime? He did not, but Jordan Stahl did. And the 06 get a frankly hilarious victory with a hat trick there from Brad Marchand. He's a goal in every single period. That's outrageous. The 10s have the lead here on the 2015s. 2-1 though for the 2015s here. Meyer and Ajo, Johansson for the 10s. Second period, goalless. Third period, not goalless. The 2015s with Besser, Rantanen, and Rantanen again. Offset the Jaden Schwartz goal. That 2015 class finds the offense after struggling a little bit in game number one. What a performance from Miko Rantanen. See if 07 can battle their way back here. First period, 1-0 for the 2018s, Philip Zadina. Second period, 1-1, Alex Kalorn. Neither of these two squads have great goaltending. You know, and that's obviously the theme. 07 was tragic. And in 2018 through the 2021 teams, some hit a little bit hit or miss. And the 07s are going to win it. James Van Riemsdyk and Max Pacioretty, despite the worst goaltending in the tournament, the Columbus 07, do have a win. And Merrick Mad Madsen. I always want to say Madsen, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Merrick Madsen gets the win. Of course, the fill-in player for Scott Darling, because I didn't feel like making him. Sorry. It is what it is. Uh, but we move on. The 2014s and the 2011s. The 11s looking to move on here, at least add to that lead. 1 1 Kucherov and Pasternak. Second period, the 14s there. Sam Reinhardt and Travis Sanheim. Third period, ooh, the 11s tie at Landeskog and Dougie Hamilton. In overtime, it's going to be the 2014s who win it. Kevin Fiala on the power play. So a good comeback there for the 2011, but they still fall short. 17s and the 08s here. 17s up 1 nothing, And up 2 nothing at the end of the first period. Nico Hishir and Henry Yoki Haru. Second period. Now 3 1 Carlson and Makar. Third period. Goal apiece. The 2017 class has a 2 nothing series lead. Goals from Ennis and Heedle in that third period. Good performance there for Heedle. And of course, John Carlson for the Ottawa 08. And our final game, too. 12 versus 13. We'll see if 13 can add to that lead. First period, goalless. Second period, goalless. 
Third period, not goal as 2012 gets the win late in the game. Tomas Hurdle on the power play. 28 save shutout for Connor Hellebuck. There we go. So a lot of one ones. Only two series have a two to nothing lead right now out of the eight opening round matchups. We move on with 20 versus 05. First period, 3 0 for the 20s. Holtz, Chinnikoff, and Trysdale. Maybe we should have played the kids. They don't even need a combined squad, though, this 2020 team. They're getting it done. It's 3 1 now with TJ Oshie. Oh, they blew it. No. <laughs> Raiden Schneider scored to make it 4 1, but then it's Vladimir Saboka, Chris Letang late, and then Crosby even later to tie it. Overtime. No winner. Double overtime in the 2020s. Win it. Caden Cooley scores again on teammate Carey Price, who had a phenomenal game. Jake Neighbors was up there too. The 2020 have a 2 1 win or 2 1 lead on the 05. Really makes you wonder there <laughs> what the right call was. We have 09 versus 2016. The 09's in trouble here. First period, goalless. Second period, goalless. Third period, and the 09 get a big win. Gave up that opening goal from Luke Koonin, but then it's Kreider to tie it, Hoffman to win it. And the Montreal 09 are on the board. Really strong performance there from Darcy Kemper. 06 versus 19, the Battle of Vancouver. First period, 3-1 for the 19. Hughes, Kako, and Tomasino. The lone goal for the 06 from Jonathan Taves. Second period, now 4-1 for the 19. Kaliev with the goal. And in the third, the 06 get one back with Kyle Pozo, but it is not enough. And a good win there for the Vancouver 2019. Big win indeed. Phil Tomasino leading the way in terms of the stars. 10 versus 15, game three. Let's see how this plays out. First period, 2-0 for the 15. McDavid and Shabbat. Second period, now 3-1. Aho and Nelson. Third period, 5-1 final. Aho again, and Kyle Connor joins in on the fun. 45 shots for the 2015 in that one. Aho leading the way. As we will go to game three between the 07 and the 18. Good on the 07 for not getting swept with that goaltending. First period, and they are down 1-0. Ty Smith. Second period, 1-1. Wayne Simmons. Third period, and the 2018 win at Yegor Sharon Govich. It's a pretty good series so far. He helps get the win. Again, it is the battle of arguably the worst goaltending in this entire tournament, yet the two goaltenders were the top two stars. <laughs> Gotta love this game. Gotta love how it sims. 2011 and 2014, game number three, first period, and it's 3-1 for the 11s. After Fiala scored, it was Huberto, Landeskog, and then Huberto again. Second period, now 3-2. Pasta gets him back to within one but they can't take advantage. Third period, Kucherov seals the deal. 4-2 final for the 2011's great performances from Huberto and John Gibson. Game three, will the 08s fall into a 3-0 hole? First period, 2-1 for the 17s. You had Norris and Makar, Carlson scoring for the 08. Second period, 5-1, Makar, Heischer and Suzuki. And in the third, they get a goal back. John Carlson again. The 2017. One win away from potentially pulling off the sweep. Chicago, I'm telling you, it's the logo. Just change your logo. It's not a big deal at all. That logo is sick. Even though it's primarily a shoulder logo, it can be your main. And then, uh, yeah, you can change your owner and some of the other stuff. And then you won't be as problematic as you are. But hey, you know, just suggestions. 2012 and 2013. It's an evened up series. Let's see what happens here. First period, 1-0 to the 12s, Philip Forsberg. Second period, still 1-0. Third period, goal apiece, Lindholm. And then Tomas Hurdle gets another winner in this series for the 2012. Hellebuck was great, as well with a 9.56 save percentage. The 05, trying to battle back here. Will they fall into a 3-1 hole? They are favorites in this series, no doubt. First period, they're up 1-0, Keith Yandel. Second period, now 3-1 as Hornqvist and Gerby score. Jarvis, the lone goal for the 20s, and that'll do it. The score holds 3-1, and that series is now tied at two apiece. Nathan Gerby leading the way for the 0-5 strong performance as well for Jonathan Quick. 
2016 is looking to add to their lead. Austin Matthews and company against the 9 First period, 2-1 though. Ryan O'Reilly and Victor Hedman. Patrick Laine scores for the 16. Second period, 16's tie it. Patrick Laine again. Third period, and they win it. Patrick Laine scores in all three periods. What is going on with that? But it works out tremendously for the 2016. Line A versus Matthews. The debate is back, baby. I'm so excited. <laughs> the debate is back. Line A gets the winner there. What a performance. So we go back to the Battle of Vancouver 2019. Trying to add to their lead. First period, 3-0 for the 06. Two for Giroux, one for Backstrom. Second period, now a goal apiece. Trevor Zegras and Kyle Pozo. And in the third, 5-1. Jeff Petrie gets involved. And the 06. Strong, strong performance when they really, really needed it. Two goals, of course, from Claude Giroux. 15 versus 10. The 15 with a 2 1 lead. First period here, 1 0 for the 10. Mikhail Granlund. Second period, now 2 0. Tyler Toffoli. Third period, and a goal apiece will seal it. Jaden Schwartz has his goal, kind of offset by Timo Meyer's late tally to ruin the shutout. But it's a big, big win after a great performance from Freddie Anderson to keep the 15s out of it. And a good result there for 2010. And then we get to, again, maybe the most interesting matchup. 07 against 18. Can 18 make it 3-1? to one? First period, 2-1 for the 07s. Muzzin and Voracek. Zadina gets a goal back. Second period, oof. Turris and Kalorin for the 07. Kurashev for the 18. Oh, my God. Well, JVR scored for the 07, but Sharon Govich, Bouchard, and Kotkaniemi all scored for the 2018 as they force overtime at 5-5, but lose in overtime as Max Pacioretty seals the win for the 07. Strong efforts there from Voracek and Ben to help lead the way. Heartbreaking performance there for the 2018 as we go to the 11 and 14. See how this one plays out. First period, goal apiece, Schmaltz and Kucherov. Second period, two goals apiece, Scheifele and Palat. But also Point and Dreisaitl, both on the power play. Third period, oof, and the 11. Just sneak it as Ellers gave them the lead. Zabanajad tied it. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, of course, the number one overall pick from that draft, gets the win. Big result for the 2011 in that particular game. And here we go. It is a 3 to nothing series lead for the 17 over the 08. Can they complete the sweep? First period, 1-1, Nick Haig and Roman Yossi. Second period, 2-1, Drake Batherson. Third period, and the 17 complete the sweep of the 08. Jason Robertson and two from Josh Norris is enough. Our first series is in the books. First round, Ottinger is real what a performance for the chicago 2017 absolutely fantastic for them let's take a look there at the team stats as jason robertson really led the way in terms of outright point totals only yamamoto and natchez without a point for the forwards defensively it was haskin and brandstrom shocking not putting up points but of course kale mccarr was great and then ottinger a 9 56 how do you like that Tremendous, tremendous results there. As, whoops, didn't mean to take a look at the 09. Certainly didn't mean to hit back either. I want to go look at the Ottawa 08. And there we have it. So, oof. Oof. Oh, man. Get goalied. Do they have one goal in the series from forwards? That's insane. No points from Bailey, Henrik, Stamkos. The greatest of the bunch, Derek Grant. And then four goals from defenders. Look at that. My God, though. The, look at that talent. The point production capabilities of that defense. And outside of Carlson and Yossi, nothing happened. Markstrom shat the bed. Normally he saves that for round two. Wow, the Ottawa 08 got absolutely goalied and tremendously uh, underperformed. That's crazy. We'll move ahead to 12 and 13. 12s with the advantage so far. First period, goal apiece, Horvat and Connor Brown. 
Second period, the 13s take the lead with Elias Lindholm. Third period, and the 13s get the win. Bark off in an empty netter from Anthony Duclair as Yussi Saros leads the way. 31 save effort from the Finn. 2-2 here between the 05 and the 20. Let's see what happens. First period, 2-0 for the 05. Sabaka and Hornquist. Second period, still 2-0. Third period, and the 05 run away with it. Stashney, Latang, and Nathan Gerby. Have yourself a series, sir. 27 save shut up for Jonathan Quick. Basket of apples for Anze Kopitar. And it's looking good for the 05. They've really battled back. The 16 have a chance to end this series right here and right now against the 09. First period, 1 0. Jake Chikrin. Second period, now 2 1 for the 09. Hoffman and Duchesne. Third period, it's tied. Tage Thompson. And in overtime, the 09 survive. Matt Duchesne gets the OT winner. And allows his class to live to see another day as Matt Duchesne, two goals, 36 saves for Darcy Kemprick. Now some Kadri up there as well. Battle of Vancouver, 2 2 split here. First period, 1 0 for the 06. Jonathan Taves. Second period, goalless. Third period, 2 2. Petrie made it 2 0. Heinola and Boldy tie it. And in overtime, the 19 win it. Cam York, what a comeback win. Three unanswered goals for the 2019 class. Spencer Knight, 35 saves. And they a the series lead now, a 3 2 series lead for the 2019. 15 and 10, also deadlocked after the first four games. First period, 2-1 for the 10. McDavid scored first. He finally gets on the board. He's been quiet. To Foley and Hall, though, give the 10 the lead. Second period, they tie it. Connor McDavid. Will he score in the third? Here we go. He doesn't, but everybody else did. Miko Ranton and Pavel Zaka and Jack Eichel. 5-2 final for the 2015. Two-goal effort for Connor McDavid. Sam Sonoff and Rantanen up there as well. And a 2-2 split now for the 18 and the 07. The battle of whose goaltending can somehow be better. First period, 2-0 for the 18. Dobson and Hayton. Second period, 2-2. Patrick Kane with two power play tallies. Third period, and the 07 come from behind to win this game. Shattenkirk, Hayton tied it. Sam Gagne scores the winner with 1.08 to go. And the 07 the back of a very strong performance from Patrick Kane. End up in a nice situation there now. The 11s looking to knock out 14. Let's see if they can do it. First period, 2-0. Couturier and Nugent Hopkins. Second period, that's it. GG's, JT Miller, Mark Shifley, and Brandon Saad. Third period, 6-0. Final as Andre Pallad adds one more. The 2011 will move on. Great effort there from Gibson. Knocking out the 2014. Let's go take a look at the stats there. But yes, a, a big, big moment there for the Minnesota 2011. Kucherov was great. Couturier, I mean, look at the scoring, the production here. Lowest player with, with two points. That's fantastic. And defensively, you had two defensemen, Larson and Murphy, both of who are defensive defensemen, and I mean, took five shots combined, so you don't really expect to see much there compared to the 21 shots in five games of Dougie Hamilton. And a really good first round performance there for John Gibson. So, tremendous work, all things considered, for the 2011. And my God, I hit the wrong button. This is. <laughs> I want to go back to Philadelphia. I was going to scroll down. I was scrolling down a bit too far anyway, but you get the point. Uh, for the 2014, I mean, decent scoring in a sense, but a lot left on the table. Sam Bennett went back to Calgary mode. Yeah, just not good enough. That offense let them down quite heavily. And then defensively, yeah, they didn't get a ton either. D'Angelo did nothing. He disappeared, despite the fact that, uh, yeah, he's a god offensively. I mean, I can't hate on the guy. He's a really good offensive player. Can't play defense worth a damn, but he did nothing in that series. Devon Taves, missing Kale McCarr. Goaltending-wise, Thatcher Demko was abysmal. So everything went wrong for the 2014 in that series. They are eliminated. 12-13, and 13, it's a 2-2 split 
First period, 2-0 for the 13, Domi and Morrissey. Second period, now 2-1, Kerfoot on the board. Third period, and the 13s get it. Lindholm, the insurance, 3-1 the final score. The 2013 have a 3-2 series lead. Another great performance there from UC Soros. Can the 05 finish off the 20 here? They had a bit of a scare. They're in the driver's seat now. First period, 1-1. Byfield and Kopitar. The Kings getting involved here. Second period, 4-1 for the 20s. Byfield again, then two from Perfetti. And in the third, they hold on to win 6-2. They're not done. Stutzla, Lafreniere, Crosby gets one back. The 05s miss a tremendous opportunity to end this series as the kids show up and force game seven. How do you like that? The battle of 16 and 09. Let's see what happens. 16's trying to end this series. First period, the down two to one. Braden Shen and Victor Hedman. Alex Dabrinkit for the 16s. Second period, 5-1 for the 09. We're going to have another game seven. Kadri, Smith, and Tatar. And in the third, 6-1 is the final. Riley Smith. So two teams so far staving off elimination and forcing game seven. Darcy Kemper with a pretty strong performance there. Not bad. Can the Vancouver 06 force game seven or will the 2019s move on? First period, 2-0 for the 19. Kaliev, both goals. Second period, goalless third period. And the 2019 proved to be the superior Vancouver-based draft class. Marshan's goal, not enough. And the 2019 are moving on, eliminating their hometown rivals in the 06 draft class. Fantastic stuff for the 2019. That's a huge, huge result for them. Matt Boldy was phenomenal. Caulfield and Hughes... The kids are all right. Every single player with at least a point. Defensively as well, every single one with at least a point. What a great first round for Jordan Spence. North Sider as well. And in goal, a 918 for Spencer Knight. On the other side, we had Reimer with a 915. It's not as if he was bad. Defensively, though, that's the story. And we knew it was a bit of a weaker defense. Petrie did the work, but one point. From Biega and then Bodner, Chuck, nothing. Holzer, uh, Eric Johnson's the real disappointing one there. I mean, Jonas Junlin, what do you really expect? And then for the forwards, I mean, Brad Marchand was fantastic. That's the only way to put it. But there was a bit of a lack of scoring. Felino didn't do anything. Frolik, Perot, Lucic, Jordan Stahl with the one OT winner. And that was about it. So, yeah, a bit of a subpar defensive setup and a lack of some depth scoring sinks the 06 draft class can the 15s move on and eliminate the 10s let's find out first period 2-0 for the 10s Grandland and Hall they've had a great first round second period now 2-2 though Besser and Rantanen and in the third we don't see a goal so we go to overtime where the 15s end the series Anthony Beauvillier 47th shot of the game was enough and the 2015s, despite Freddie Anderson's best attempt, they are eliminated. We'll take a look here at the numbers for the 2015. What a first round for Miko Rantanen. Look at the scoring efforts in general again. Every single player had at least a point, which isn't that bad. And then defensively, I mean, Shabbat, Wierenski, Anderson, it's not as if Dunn, Prover, Offer, Hannafin had to really even do anything, even though you expect more. Goaltending-wise, a 918 for Ilya Samsonov. Pretty good result for him. Freddie Anderson finishes with a 914. Not too bad at all. Defensively, I mean, yeah. Like, it's not a bad defense, but, you know, someone like Eric Branson and Mark Pissick didn't really work too well together. And then forward-wise, I mean, there you go. That's the difference. The real lack of high-end scoring. Kuznetsov, Stone, and Skinner all held without a point that is simply unacceptable if the 2010 were to move on and they did not so that is no doubt the big story there more underperforming players this time for the la 2010 as they are eliminated in the 2018s for seven or will the 07s pull off what could be considered by some an upset based off of again that goaltending first period three one for the 07s two from patch ready one from kalorn cockney gets one back Second period, now 6-2. 
Sharon Govich got that second one. Then it's Martinez, Kane, and Patch ready again. 8 4 is the final score in this one as the 07 get the win over the 18. A six point night for Alex Martinez. Holy hell. As again, the Columbus 07 knock out the Dallas 2018. Let's take a look at the 07 who are moving on. What a first round for Patrick Kane. Again, for all the people who are like, oh, why is he an 83? He won't be good. Again, eat pant. You don't know what you're talking about, and I do, and I'm sorry if that upsets you. But end of the day, he is still a monster in, in the sim. No doubt about it, and in gameplay, too. Uh, with this setup, he just destroyed worlds in that particular series against a bad goaltender or not. I mean, hey, David Perron set up pretty damn well with, uh, you know, some interesting shooting accuracy and such and some great defense. That didn't really matter too much for him, did it? So a good result there defensively. Martinez was phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's an older core at this point, but they were getting it done. And then in goal, uh, Merrick Mad Madsen. Mazden. Why do I always want to say Mazden? Uh, put up a 9 one So good for you, replacement Scott Darling. Despite being a 61 overall, because EA gonna EA. <laughs> Let's be honest. For the 2018, yeah, Yegor Sharangovich being your top player isn't uh, probably a recipe for success. I mean, uh, you know, a lack of depth scoring for sure. Nothing from McLeod or Joe Boleno. And then defensively, you know, they needed those guys to contribute a little bit more. Rasmus Dahlin did not have a good series whatsoever. And in goal, Ivan Prosvetov uh, was outdueled by his uh, veteran counterpart there. So the 2018 are bounced as well. Can the 13 move on, or will the 12 force game seven? First period, 1-1, one, one, Monaghan and Kerfoot. Second period, 3-1 for the 12, Tierney and Pearson. Third period, 5-1, the 12s do force game seven. Forsberg and Tara Vinen adding two more. So that series continues on. What a time for Chris Tierney to show up and ever-present is Connor Hellebuck. So here we go. We have three game sevens, and this is perhaps the most intriguing. Again, I put the 05 against the 21s to see who would earn their spot because both were interesting teams. The 05 won that best of three. If it had gone seven, who knows? Because the 20s might just pull this off. Let's see here. First period, 1 1, Lafreniere and Latang. Second period, 3 1 for the 05. Two goals for Sidney Crosby. And in the third, they get the insurance. Latang and Sabatka. Baron scores. But it is too little, too late. What a fight put up by the 20s. But the 05 draft class. Moving on. Sidney Crosby, Chris Latang, and TJ Oshie leading the way. Heartbreaker for sure. Some will say, of course, that the 05 shouldn't be in this series. And again, I think that'll be kind of the, the main talking point here, perhaps. But I mean, look at that. We know the Penguins showed up, but look at, the, I mean, come on, the depth scoring. What a series for Nathan Gerby. Justin Advocator was the only guy to not put up a point. And then defensively, I mean, again, Tang was unreal. They survived having Chris Russell, Mark Edward Vlasic, and Jack Johnson on defense. And a 9-12 for Jonathan Quick. Carey Price played very well when he came on in a relief effort. And then for the 2020, I mean, yeah. Dawes performed about as well as you'd expect from a you know, low, you know, mid-70s goaltender. Caden Gooley was fantastic, but I mean, again, the plus-minus kind of kind of speaks for itself. And then forward-wise, Perfetti, Raymond, and Neighbors all tied with five points. Every single forward had at least one point, but just not enough offensive firepower. And then, of course, knowing that the 2021 class would have even less because obviously we only have one NHL season to go off with now as opposed to one or two. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably would have been a similar result. That's one game, one in the books. 16 versus 09. Let's do this. Who else is moving on? First period, 2 nothing for the 16. Dubois and Matthews. Second period, now 3 nothing. Matthews again. Third period, the 9 tried, but they fall short. Tavares and O'Reilly, it wasn't enough as Keller also scored. And the 2016 move on over the 9 What a time for Austin Matthews to show up. A big, big win for the Buffalo 2016. 
If you take a look there, Austin Matthews, great performance in that game seven. Patrick Linea was phenomenal. Not nearly enough offense from some of these guys, though. Tage Thompson and Dubois only at one goal each is pretty surprising. Defensively, Fox was great. Nothing really there from Sam Girard. A little bit surprising. And then in goal, not the best series for Carter Hart with a 9.08, but it was enough. For the 09, Kemper tried his damnedest. Just wasn't enough. Defensively, someone like Ekholm. I mean, you know, not the best offense, not the best offensive player in the world, but still no points for him. And then forward-wise, Kadri led the way. Got to be honest, I'm shocked. Chris Kreider only scored one goal. John Tavares with three points. Evander Kane. Thomas Tatar, one point each. So the 9 just could not get it done. And that sets the stage. Sets the stage, easy for me to say, for our final game of the opening round. Game 7, 12 versus 13. Let's see how this goes. First period, goalless. Second period, 2-1 now for the 13s. Theodore and Bushnevich, Teravainen for the 12s. And in the third... It's a goal apiece, the 2013 class moving on, eliminating the 2012 in seven games. You see Soros with another fantastic performance as we get ready to head to round two tomorrow. But before that, let's take a look here at the two classes. And of course, we want, goodness gracious, I I just scrolled right over it twice. I really did. It's perfectly fine. We want those 2012s with Tomas Hurdle kind of leading the way offensively. Oof. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Nothing from Anderson, nothing from Wilson. That extra physicality didn't really pan out. Riley and Goss despair. Defense kind of disappointed a bit. And then Hellebuck was phenomenal. It's shocking that he is out with that good of a series that he had. For the 2013, UC Saros, though, was just that much better. And then defensively, they got a little bit more. Seth Jones was the only guy to not put up a point. Plenty of penalty minutes, though. And then up front, kind of by committee, let's be honest, UC Saros stole that series. Nathan McKinnon had just one point. That's the real shock. He struggled as much as he did, yet they still moved on. So that is the first round in the books. We'll take a look here at the best players in general. Crosby and Kane both on 10 points. Six goals for Max Pacioretty in round number one. Amongst the defenders, 10 points for Chris Letang. He also led the way amongst defenders with four goals. And in terms of goalies, a couple of shutouts. No one with more than one top goalie in the first round. Surprise, surprise, was Jake Ottinger in the sweep. So let's take a look then as we have... The Ottawa 05 against the Columbus 07. The Buffalo 16 moving on as well. They'll be taking on the Minnesota 11. And on that right-hand side, Vancouver 19 takes on Chicago 17. And then you have the battle of 15 and 13 as well. A lot of the higher classes moving on. Most of the higher classes moving on so it's very much in terms of recent talent is this current bias and of course you had the battle of 05 and 07 so another one of those older classes will be knocked out those are your elite eight tune back in tomorrow for round number two for now i thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed looking forward to seeing your feedback as well down below what you think of this who you think is going to win now at this stage check out everything in the description of course as always the second channel with all my franchise mode content the two Take podcast all that good stuff i'll see you guys in the next one for round number two